Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem combination sum two. This is actually my second time making a solution for this one because I think I could do a little bit better than the first time I explained this one. So before we start, I want to mention that this is part two of the combination sum series. I would definitely watch part one of this. I have a very good video on this. You can also check it on neatcode.io if you want to search for it. This problem and combination sum one are a part of the neatcode 150 list, which is a very good list of problems to understand. And actually, there's another problem that will help you understand the trick behind this problem. It's actually an array problem. It's called threesome. That's also a part of the neatcode 150 list. And it's beneficial to know for this problem because we kind of eliminate duplicate solutions pretty much the same way, except we do so recursively in this problem. So let's get into it. The idea is we're given a list of numbers and we want to find all combinations from this set of numbers that sum up to eight. So similar to the first question. So one way would be one, one, six. We get this one, we get this six and we get this one. They sum up to eight. Another one would be one, seven. You could choose this one and this one, but couldn't we make up one seven multiple ways? Couldn't we also have chosen the second one over here and the seven? Well, technically they count as the same combination. So we don't want duplicate combinations in the solution set. And another difference between this problem and the first combination sum is that we cannot use the same number an unlimited amount of time. So we can't just take the one and reuse it eight times to sum up to the target. We could though use the same element multiple times if it shows up multiple times in the input. We have two occurrences of one, so that's the max number of times that we can use the number one in a solution. So that's what makes this a little bit tricky. In the first combination sum, we were given a distinct set of numbers and we could reuse the same number an unlimited amount of time. So in the first problem, we had the input and we were able to solve it very simply with recursion. For an, a given element, either you include it or you skip it. So we would have had 10 or we would have skipped 10. And then from here, we would have chosen from the next element, we can either include one or we can skip one. From this side though, we're not quite at one yet. We can actually choose to continue including 10. We can have multiple occurrences of 10 or we could have skipped it. And in that case from here, we would have started choosing from one. So here we could have chosen uh, one or we could have skipped one. And so that was a very simple two branch recursion, but we can't apply the same here. And the reason for that is at some point with this example, we might include one and then eventually we might get to seven and then we might include seven as well. If we were to have skipped this one, we could have gone down this path. We could have included the seven and then we could have included the one that came after it and we would have ended up with duplicate combinations. So we want to avoid this case and we can believe it or not still do so with two branch recursion. It's going to be similar to how we eliminate duplicates in threesome. So this is the trick behind eliminating duplicates. The issue here is that when we choose to include one or choose to skip one, we don't want to end up with another one on the same path where we decided to skip one. So how can we make it so that we never see another one again if we decided to skip it? Well, this is the trick. First, you take the input array and you sort it. So I'm going to redraw this in sorted order. Now it's sorted. Why did I put it in sorted order? Because I want all duplicate elements to be adjacent. It's not necessarily important that we go through the elements in sorted order. That's actually not important because all of these are going to be positive anyway. So they're always going to contribute to the target. We're never going to deal with negative numbers. So it doesn't matter so much the order that we go through them, but it does matter that we group similar elements together. So now I'm actually able to make the choice. I'm going to say, okay, either I include one in my solution set. So this branch is going to include all possible combinations that include one or have multiple occurrences of one up to two in this example, or I'm going to decide to skip one on this side. 
But when we are choosing from an element, we're going to obviously have some kind of pointer that tells us the current position that we're at. Let's call that I. So here I'm choosing between this element. I can include it. And if I include it here, I definitely need to shift my pointer because I'm not allowed to reuse that same element multiple times. So I do have to shift the pointer here. So it's going to be shifted. But what about this case where I decided I want to skip one? Well, if I shift it by one and it lands over here, I'm still able to choose from one, but I wanted to skip it all together. So this is where we're going to use something called a loop. I'm going to use a while loop. And what we're going to say is don't just shift I by one, keep shifting it while the element at I is equal to its neighbor. So while these two are equal, shift I. So right now, I is going to be shifted over here. And right now, this value is not equal to its next neighbor. So now this is where I is going to land. And when we actually make the recursive call, we're always going to be passing in I plus one into the recursive call. So we don't really have to shift it again here. So it's already going to be passed in uh, when we do it recursively. So that'll probably make more sense when we get to the code. But keep in mind that just because we have a loop in the recursive solution doesn't mean we're going to be recursively calling the function multiple times. We're still only doing two branch recursion. So with this, I'll kind of run through the quick simulation here and then we'll get into the code. The code is going to be very similar to combination sum one, just the fact that we're sorting the input this time and that we're going to have a loop inside of our recursive function. So here we can continue to include one. We're at the second one. So here we could have included it. We would have gotten that one one or we could have skipped it in which case we're over here. So we would have, you know, still have been here, but just keep in mind that I'm not drawing exactly where the pointer happens to be. Um, here we could like go through all combinations. Obviously that's gonna be a very large tree, but just trust me when I say that eventually we could have skipped two, we could have skipped five and we could have gotten to six. And in that case, this would have been one valid combination where we get one, one, six. So that's gonna be valid. Now, another base case could have been where we have gotten to like one, one, seven. Clearly in this case, we went over the target. The target should be eight, but when you sum all of these together, we're gonna to get nine. So at that point, we can actually stop our recursion because we know all elements in the input are positive. So we're never going to get a lower sum. If our sum is nine now, but we're looking for a sum of eight, well, we're never going to get there at this point. That's another base case. Now from here, you could imagine that we would have skipped everything in between here and we would have gotten to seven. In that case, we would have gotten one seven. That's another uh, valid combination. And I won't draw all of them out, but here we could have gotten to one, two, five. That's another valid one. In the case where we skip one, we could have chosen two and then eventually chosen six. So that would have been another valid one. These are all the valid ones. I didn't draw out the entire recursion tree. I would encourage you to do that as an exercise, though. I do think it'll help you understand it. And it might be easier to kind of do the drawing after you look at the code. So maybe that'll help you out. Keep in mind, the overall time complexity of this is going to be similar to combination sum one. Even though we're doing sorting and log n, that's not going to be the bottleneck. The bottleneck is going to be the fact that we have up to two branches at every single step, assuming that every number would be distinct in the input. We'll have two branches. So the overall time complexity is going to be something like two to the power of n. That's how many different combinations we could have ended up with. When we add these to the result, we are going to create a copy of every single array. So I think in the worst case, the time complexity would be n times two to the power of n. So not very efficient, but given that this is a combination problem, there's no way around that. Like the size of the solution in the worst case is going to be n two to the power of n. So there's no like shortcut in terms of time for us to achieve the correct solution in this case. So you can't really apply dynamic programming to this. It's not going to help you out. In terms of the space, if you don't count the output as extra space, the overall uh, memory is going to be big O of N for an individual combination or for like the size of the recursive call stack. So I'm going to declare the result. It's going to be an array of the combinations. We know that that's what we're ultimately going to return down here. So I'm just going to put that there. Now we are going to have a recursive function. You could call it DFS or backtrack. I guess I'll call it DFS. It doesn't really matter. We know that there's a few things we're going to have to keep track of. One, the current position that we're at in the candidates array. 
two is the current combination. I'll just call that cur for short. So those are the elements in our current combination. And the third variable is going to be the sum or the total of those current elements so that we can compare once the total has reached the target amount or the total has exceeded the target amount. So before you even get into this recursion, remember that our solution only is going to eliminate duplicates if we sort the input array. That's the easiest way to do it. So make sure to call sort on the input array in your language of choice. It's pretty easy in Python. So so I would highly recommend using Python. I have a couple of good courses for that, Python for beginners and Python for coding interviews. Now let's start with the base cases. They're pretty simple. One, we either reach the target amount. Total is equal to the target amount. Two is the total exceeds the target amount. There's actually one more base case though, and that's what if we run out of candidates? That would mean our I pointer is out of bounds. So either this is true or I is greater than or equal to candidates and it will usually just be equal to the length of candidates. So we can just put that there. So these are the two base cases. The second one is simple. That's when we just return. We do not have a valid combination and we never will at this point. This is where we do have a valid combination. So what do we do? Well, clearly we have to update the result. So I'm gonna say result.append to it, not just the current combination, cause that's gonna be a variable that we're passing around by reference. So we wanna actually create a copy of this. One way to do that in Python is like this, dot copy. Again, Python is such a readable language, such an easy language to use, isn't it? Now, don't forget within this base case to return. I mean, I guess if you didn't have the return, it probably wouldn't hurt, but given that all elements in candidates are positive, if we've reached the total sum, everything after this is just gonna increase that. So might as well just put the return here early. Now for the recursive case, and this is probably gonna be the complicated part. So let me go a little bit slow. One is where we include the element at index i. Let's call that candidates at index i. And the other is where we skip candidates at index i. So this first case is pretty simple. It's similar to the combination sum one. What we're gonna do is update our current elements. We're gonna include the element at index i, and then we're gonna run DFS. Now for the index, we're not gonna pass index i because that would mean we're able to reuse the element at index i. But in this problem, we're not allowed to reuse the same element. So we have to put a plus one here. We cannot reuse candidates at index i. Second, we're gonna pass in the current combination. That's pretty straightforward. And third, we're gonna pass in the new total. The total is just gonna be the previous total plus this element, whatever this element contributed to the total. There you go. Now, after we're done with this recursive call, we're going to have to undo the work that we just did. And that's pretty much as simple as removing the element that we just appended to the current. So we can say current dot pop because of course, in the next case, we wanna skip that element. So we have to remove it from the current set of elements. Now, the next part, I wish it was as easy as doing this, as easy as just calling DFS on I plus one with the current combination with the previous total. Since we're skipping the element, there's no need to update the total. I wish it was this simple, but it's not. We require two more lines of code, and that is the loop that I was talking about. We want to say, while the candidate is at index i is equal to the candidate at index i plus one, while that's the case, increment the pointer, because I don't want to use the element at index i, and I don't want to use any duplicates of that element either. I want to skip this element altogether, and the way to do that is with this loop. Like I showed you the example where we had multiple ones, where we had one, one, and then we had a two after it. But it could have been the case that we had more than that. We could have had like four ones or five ones. So we already recursively did the path where we include one or more ones. Now I wanna do the path where we skip all of these ones. So that's why we need the loop. Don't just skip this one, skip this, 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 and this so that we have a fresh choice to make. There's one issue with this. What if we had an array like this? Well, i is always gonna be equal to the next element, and then we're gonna end up with a comparison where we compare this to the next element, but it doesn't exist. Make sure you have this. i plus one is in bounds. 
so that we don't get an index out of bounds error when we execute this part. So that's very important. Now, this is the entire code. Well, I guess there's one thing that we're missing. If you're smart, you'll be able to notice it. We defined our DFS function, but we never called it. So let me do that down here. DFS, what do you think the parameters are going to be? Well, we're going to start at index zero. Let's put that. The current combination initially is going to be empty. So we can have an empty array here. And lastly, our total sum initially is just going to be zero. So let me put a zero there. After we call this function, our result should be updated and then we can return the final result. So let me execute this. And as you can see here, it works. It is efficient, even though these run times are pretty random. Maybe there are some hacky ways that we can improve the execution time. But in terms of big O complexity, this is the final solution. It is the most optimal. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a very comprehensive roadmap and for a bunch of courses that will make your life a lot easier. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.